When you work in a place where the commodity you handle is money, you are always faced with the possibility that someone will try to steal it. On the other hand, you can go about your job year after year, serving customers whose only unusual demand is for a red or yellow lollipop. But someday, the next customer in your line may not be so easily satisfied. This man is a robber. If he pulled his gun on you... This is a holdup. Fill up the bag. Would you be victim or witness? odds have caught up with you. You are being held up. Don't set off any alarm. What do you see and what do you do? You got a buddy watching you. How would you meet your responsibilities? Do you black out, seeing only a featureless, holed up man with a gun? Or do you see a man about five feet eleven, dark brown hair, heavy build, wearing a black suit? Do you notice that he is carrying a snub-nosed revolver in his left hand? Do you follow him to see him drive off in a light green Buick driven by another man? Do you see even part of the license number of the car? If you saw and remembered even half of these details, you would be greatly assisting law enforcement officers and be performing a real service to your company and to your community. You would be a valuable witness to the robbery, not just the victim of it. What you see and do may be the means of getting the money back and of putting the criminal behind bars. An alert description of the bandit and of his actions can give the police and the FBI the start they need to catch the robber. If you saw only a bandit with no features except a gun, if fear and panic were blurring your vision, then you have failed your responsibility as a citizen. Any hint at all helps the authorities to narrow the head start a robber has who runs out your door. He is trying to lose himself fast. The police must find him fast. Where should they look? The streets are full of men. Which one is the robber? Are the police to look for a man on foot? A tall man? Was he fat? Skinny? Was he a blonde? Does he limp? Or was he wearing a coat? The police can use any hint at all in their search. Or did he leave in a car? A white one? How about a green one? Was it a black one? Two-tone red and white? A sedan or a station wagon? A Ford or a Buick? Georgia license plate? Number 2D4 something. Number 2D4723. That's better yet. It is important to start looking for the car right away. If the robber is still driving the getaway car, he's tagged. If it is found abandoned, then the police have one more fact to add to their case. Maybe the authorities can take a shortcut and match up the robber with his past record. Official files are full of wanted posters of known criminals. It is often possible to spot them again with the help of your description. Well, since the authorities cannot be on the scene during the robbery, it is up to you to act in their place to provide them with a solid start towards solving the crime. Your very first step, of course, if you have a silent alarm, is to set off your alarm as soon as you can. To make sure, press it again several times and hard. There have actually been cases where tellers did press their alarms during a robbery, but not press hard enough to work it and summon help. Set off your alarm right away before the robber becomes accustomed to your movement. Do it while he is getting used to the situation, and he won't notice it. But with sufficient time, the police may be waiting for him at the door. Next, do as you are told. Obey the robber's demands, except the inevitable one about sounding the alarm. Give him all the money in sight, but no more, unless he obviously knows about it by asking for it. Be sure to give him the bait money if your firm provides it. When he is caught with it or later spends it, he will be positively linked with the robbery. 
He's there for money and he's armed, so give him enough to satisfy him, but no more. Remember always, the time is in your favor. He has to rush, he can't wait. If you can go slowly, he'll have to hurry, and maybe he'll leave without everything he came for. Uh, to a robber, every second seems like 10. Don't overdo it, but when he says hurry, hurry slowly. This will give you time to do your most important job, observing the robber. So, be a witness. It's something you have to practice ahead of time. A good description starts with the obvious things, male or female, and there are female robbers. Height, weight, age, color of eyes and hair, clothes. These features allow the authorities to pick up their suspects out of the crowd. Then there are the smaller details, scars, marks, mannerisms, jewelry, or accent. They help to confirm the identity of a suspect. They are the positive part of a positive identification. Now you have to practice identifying people because normally you only look at them for recognition, not identification. So set up your own identification drills where you work and practice the techniques. Start with a fellow worker, one of average height. Have him step up to your window. He is five feet, six inches tall. Pick a couple of height measuring references. From the position you would take if you were being robbed, see where the counter hits him, about the middle of his chest. The top of his head comes to just above the middle of the calendar behind him. Get his measurement references well in mind. Remember, he's five feet six. Ask your pretend robber to go to the door. Now he's farther away from you and you can check his height and build from a different perspective. One important but unobtrusive criminal catcher is a height reference at the door. This simple device consists of two marks taped or painted on the door frame. One at five and a half feet from the floor, the other six feet high. Use them as references. If there are two exits, mark them both. Keep these height gauges in mind and practice on a few other people and check your estimate of how tall you think they are. Would you say he's the same height? Almost, five five. His hair makes him look taller than he really is. While he's at the door, look at his build. Weight in pounds may be too hard to estimate, so go by his general build. Skinny, average, heavy. He's heavily built, 210 pounds. Now on another colleague, try height, weight, and age. How tall is he? What's his build? And how old is he? For reference, he's six feet tall, medium weight, 186 pounds, and he's 23 years old. Drill into your mind the way a six-footer looks at the door. It's a good idea to repeat this practice periodically so you don't get rusty. In doing your duty during a robbery, it is well to remember that you are not alone. You have the entire weight of society, the law, and the courts on your side, while the robber is all alone. He's also up against from 20 years to life imprisonment when he is caught. The federal bank robbery law imposes the 20 year sentence for, quote, causing fear to an employee, unquote, by any means whatever. But if fear of prison were the answer, there would be no holdups. Bandits will always take the big chance for the big money. The robbery trend is towards banks and financial institutions that cannot afford to touch off a gunfight in the lobby. A particular firm can sometimes get a reputation as a soft touch, and the uninvited customers may strike time after time until the soft touch toughens up and the next robber is caught and sent to jail. So that's where you come in. If you are held up, you can do a lot towards putting the robber out of circulation. On your prompt alarm, the authorities can get a head start on the criminal. You can furnish the authorities with a description of the robber, his actions, his direction, and method of getaway. And when he is caught, you can identify him positively, assuring that he will never again endanger others in a holdup. By being a good witness, you can actually prevent holdups because when the penalty exceeds the payoff, the crooks will look elsewhere for their easy money. These are the basic points to remember during a robbery. Set off the alarm as soon as you realize you're being robbed. Obey the robber. 
Do as he says, but do it slowly, and don't do any more than he says. Be a witness. Get his description. Observe his peculiarities. Observe his getaway. After the robber leaves, the very first step is to telephone the authorities. That means telephone the police or the sheriff if he has jurisdiction and the FBI and the state patrol. Give them a brief description of the robber or robbers so that they can begin their search. Call your company officials last because they don't need these precious seconds to catch the crook. Do it immediately. Time means success or failure. Next, preserve clues. Guard the crime scene for the investigators. Fingerprints, heel marks on the floor, notes or bags, any clue at all should be preserved. Put paper over the spots that may have clues, the counter and the floor. Save those clues. Write description. Your first impressions are the freshest and the best, so write them down even before the authorities arrive. It's the best identification and it saves vital seconds. If your firm has other specific hold-up procedures, follow them. But these are basic points anyone can follow. The techniques of stealing money are as varied as the number of robbers, but certain patterns are the most common. The big advantage the robber has over a teller is shock, surprise, and fear. The fear is usually the fear of the unknown. So we can show you here a teller's eye view of some typical robberies. As you watch, take advantage of them and train yourself to meet a hold-up emergency at your window. Lunchtime is one of the most popular hold-up hours. Some of the employees are out of the building. At the moment, you have two customers. One leaves, and now you have a robber at your window. This is a stick-up. Fill up the sack with all your money. Trip your alarm button right now. Begin to get the money, then look him over. This is a typical disguise, and unfortunately, a good one. A hat conceals his head and hair. Dark glasses cover most of his features, and gloves leave no fingerprints. After he leaves, he can remove his disguise in an everyday manner without attracting attention. Height and build. Five, six and a half, medium build. Look under his hat for hair coloring. What you can see of it is sandy gray. Sandy gray hair. He's about 55 years old. You can see his mouth and nose because they are not covered. What else can you spot? The gloves are brand new. Maybe bought just for this holdup. He's leaving now. Take a look at him from a distance so you can identify him in a lineup later. Now that he's gone, there are several things to do fast. Hit your alarm button again to make sure. Tell the nearest employee to call the police you've been robbed. Step outside the door and see how he's making his escape. Follow him as far as you can. Then come back inside. Make sure the police and FBI have been called. Don't let anybody disturb the scene, because there may be fingerprints or other clues. Spread newspaper on the floor where he stood, as his heel prints may be a clue. Then sit down immediately and write down on paper every detail you can remember. Your first impressions are the best. When the police arrive, your description will be ready, and with no wasted time, they can get after the bandit. Let's try another one. This man is a note passer. The technique is supposed to look like a normal business transaction to bystanders. It will look that way to you, too, until you read the note. The first thing to do, of course, is do use the bell. Punch your alarm button, twice. The next thing is to keep his note. It may have his fingerprints or some other clue on it. Put it aside, out of sight as you start to gather up the money. Now look at him. He has no mask or disguise. This may mean that he is from out of town and has no fear of being recognized. You won't recognize him, but you can remember him. Height. Tall, six feet. Average build, 165 pounds. Eyes, blue. Hair, light brown. Age, about 37. Clothes, 
black coat. And the coat that covers the gun, green with a black lining. Anything distinctive? His ring on his left hand. Black onyx with a diamond set in a diamond shape. He hasn't said a word, so there's no voice to remember. But he is neatly dressed and well-groomed. As he leaves, watch his walk. He has a limp. While checking his height at the door, push your alarm again. He's outside. Tell a fellow employee to call the police. Go to the door. He's getting into a car alone. Notice anything? His limp is gone. He did it to throw you off the track. Well, get him the license number, put you back on it, and in a few minutes, the police, too. Well, so far, you've done everything right. Set off your alarm and been a good witness when you noticed his phony limp. You did particularly well to watch his escape outside and get the license number and description of the car. Remember the car? What was it? A red and white 1957 Plymouth? Yes. But don't stop now. Ask the teller you told you had been robbed if the police had been called. If not, do it yourself immediately. When you took his note and kept it, you are beginning to preserve clues. Spread papers over your counter to preserve his fingerprints, and also on the floor where the robber stood. Now, write down his description. You should put down his height, weight, age, and that description of his ring. But also note that he kept his gun, if he had one, concealed under his coat. Now that brings up another point you should be familiar with, guns. Often the best description we get is, he had a gun with a hole in it about that big. Now you ought to know a bit more. Here is a pistol. It's a revolver, like the cowboy's faithful Colt. It has this revolving cylinder to hold the bullets. Now this one is blued with a short barrel. The other type of pistol is the automatic. Now this one does not have the cylinder. It is straight, and the bullets go in a clip inside the handle. Automatics come large like this, and small. There are dozens of makes and calibers of pistols, but your description should include whether it was a revolver or an automatic, blued or nickel-plated. Now some pistols have wooden handles, some have ivory or bone. A description of the gun is as important as that of the robber. You can now tell the police the type of car he left in, all are part of the license number, and among other things that he put on a phony limp. To you, this may be an isolated fact, but to the police, it may well be the identifying method of operation, the trademark of a known robber. These facts are your way to help get the money back, even though you could not prevent it's being stolen. Robbing financial firms once was the trade of the organized, ruthless gangs. Men like John Dillinger or Babyface Nelson went in shooting. Crime was their profession. Murder was an incidental sideline. But today, the robbers are more likely to be amateurs. There is no subtlety here, no note, no concealed gun. When everybody is to be held up, everybody has to know about it. All right, there's a hold up. Stay away from the counter. Don't anybody set off any alarm. That's your cue for the alarm. Uh, don't put your hands up. Just look natural. Okay. Now Hold the up. situation is up. different. There are three Let's men move to it, watch. Please. Try to get an impression of all of them, but concentrate on the ones uh, nearest you. Watch it. Get them down, Pat. The one picking up the money is closest. Size him up. He has blonde hair and wears horn-rimmed glasses. Five feet nine, slim build. His back is toward you, so look for details there. He has muddy shoes. File that away. Hold the it. leader is tall and skinny. He has it. dark hair and deep-set eyes. That gun That's he's waving it. is a big nickel-plated revolver. Okay, fine. Everybody down on the ground and stay there for about 10 minutes because uh, I got a friend outside with a Tommy gun gonna see to what you do. Now take a discreet peek over the counter, and then without confusion, get three things done and done fast. Push the alarm button again. Tell somebody to call the police immediately. Send somebody else outside to see which way they went. Now don't worry about their still being there or having an accomplice with a machine gun waiting for you. What gang would wait around outside a robbery scene when they had no way to know for sure whether the police were on their way or not? 
At least one person should wait outside for the police. Somebody must be outside to bring them in after the robbers have left. Now that's very important. Standard police procedure is cover the doors and stay out of the building while a robbery is in progress. No amount of money can pay for a life. And so the officers cannot risk crashing into a situation where shooting might break out. It has also happened that the police have waited tensely outside for 15 minutes, not daring to enter, waiting for the robbers to come out. While inside, the employees were waiting just as anxiously for their entrance and cursing the delay. Somebody has to let the police know they can move in. Otherwise, they will think the robbers are still inside. Now, let's try some more robbers and practice noticing their different details. A bottle of nitroglycerin to blow the place up is this man's gimmick. Be getting his description now. As usual, do as he says, but take comfort from the statistics. It's hardly ever really nitro. He might have called it acid or lye and threatened to throw it at you. But look at the man, not the gimmick. Want to check results? He's five feet 11, age 38, average build, 168 pounds, light gray hair, a black suit, brown and gray tie. Here's a man with a money problem, so big he's asking for exactly the right change. I want $3,800 in $20 bills. Invariably an amateur, his kind is troubled with a debt and sees your window as his salvation. Just put it in my hand. How tall? Five, 11 and a half. Build, average, 165 pounds. Age? 36. He wears a wedding ring, a watch with an expansion band, and a light gray suit. This man tried a disguise, theatrical makeup to make himself look different. The mustache isn't real, among other things. His eyes are very dark, black in fact. His hair is apparently black too, unless he dyed it. His height? Five feet eight, stocky built. Here is a disguise that the bandit can take out on the street without arousing undue suspicion, but it still covers his features. The idea is to make you think he has a badly cut face under those bandages, but most likely it's just skin. How tall is he? Five feet 11. How heavy? 170 pounds. Age? 31. He's covering a big nickel plated revolver with that magazine. He's forgetting the magazine, so be sure to protect its fingerprints later. And be sure to tell the investigators to check the door frame too. The old time stagecoach robber got this disguise from his great grandpa. The trouble with it is, it's very conspicuous, but it still does its job. You can still get a height, build, and eye color, plus other details. Now if you said six feet tall, blonde hair, 40 years old, 179 pounds, heavy set with blue eyes, the police might know whom they are looking for. Be sure you get this witness's name too. These have been some of the unwanted customers that drop in at banks, savings and loan associations, and loan offices. Your identification of them, plus your calm effective action during and after a robbery, can mean the end of their criminal careers and the end of the current wave of financial institution robberies. During and after a robbery, keep your head. Follow your firm's hold-up procedure, if one has been set up. If there is no procedure, or if special circumstances occur to make them unworkable, rely on these basic steps. During the robbery, turn in the alarm. Obey robber's directions giving only obvious money, including the decoy bills. Be a witness. After the robbery, telephone the authorities, call the police and the FBI, preserve clues and guard the scene. Write down description, and when they arrive, assist investigating authorities. If you do these things, you'll be a witness, not just a victim. You'll be doing your part to stop the current robbery wave. Just for practice now, let's go to a lineup of suspects and see how your memory is working. In a real crime, you would later have the same duty at police headquarters.
How many of these men can you identify? Take your time, look carefully. These three should look familiar. You've seen them all before. The man on the left, did he hold you up? The middle man next, how about him? And the one on the right? For a hint, one was the man with the bandana mask. One had the bottle of nitro. The other had the bandaged face. This man used the bandana disguise. He had the bottle. And he had the bandages. How is your score? Would you have done well in a police lineup? On this lineup, one of the men is a ringer. What about the others? Were they the hold-up gang? You're getting warm. Right and left were members of the gang, the leader and the lookout. Which one is the ringer? The man on the right is the producer of this film. The one on the left, he held you up, but don't let the company he keeps mislead you. He wasn't in the gang. He wanted the $3,800. Four more suspects. Who are they? Remember the man with glasses, hat, and gloves? He's one of these two. Is it the man on the left? or him. It's the other one. Here's your bandit minus hat, gloves, and glasses. Would you have spotted him? How many recognized this other man? He was the first one you saw, the robber who opened the film and furnished the background for the titles. How about the other two? First this one. Height, build, face. He is the one with no disguise who passed the note and put on the phony limp as he left. Now the last man. Was he one of the gang or the one disguised with theatrical makeup? He was the cameraman of this film. You've never seen him before. Let's look for specific men now. Remember the man with the theatrical makeup? He's one of these three without it. But which one? Number one? Number two? Or number three? He is number one. Now the third gang member. You saw a lot of his back. Which one? You're right if you say number three. Who is the man in the middle? Now look closely. He wasn't in this film at all. But maybe someday he will stop at your window with a gun or a note or a threat. When he does come by, do your duty to your job and your community. Your calm identification will leave no question as to whether you will be victim or witness.